<laughs> Hello, coders, and welcome to another How to Code Well podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about junior developer roles. And I'm joined by Josh Hudson, who is a junior web developer based in Brighton, England, and is currently working at a digital agency called Tilt. Hi, Josh. How's it going? Welcome to the show. Hi. Uh, yeah, it's all right. Everything's going all right today. Excellent. Excellent. Do you have a good week? Yeah, it's been good so far, really. It's nearly the end of the week, but it's been it's been really good. Marvellous. Nice weather. <laughs> it is. Strangely, it's nice weather in uh, in the UK here, which is very odd. I, in fact, I had a barbecue the other night, which um, is very rare <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this time of year. So um, let's start by talking about uh, how you got into the web development web development industry um what was the thing that uh, inspired you or pushed you to learn code well i think i started to think about code uh in my previous job um i was working in a call center for a very very long time mm. and felt the need to change my career and was thinking or oh, where do i go i've studied a degree degree in something completely different to what I'm doing now mm. and thought, let's see what's out there. Um, I utilized my works um, funds for basically training their staff. So they were allowing you to go and do courses and stuff mm. and looked up something more in computing at first. So studying CompTIA and sort of things like that. And then kind of moved on to more code based and web development kind of courses, nice. um, which seemed to, piqued my interest more than tinkering around on the inside of a computer. Um, so I, I went on from there and yeah, just chose to kind of go down the route of coding and just took advantage of the money that was given to me to do that Right, and just go for it. That sounds awesome. Okay. So there's a couple of things in there that I would like to pull apart. Um, <laughs> how long were you in the, uh, in, in the, co in the uh, call center for? Since probably around about 2000 and, let's say, I'd hate to say, uh, 2003 <laughs> to about two years ago. So let's say okay. it's definitely over 10 years sure. I was in a call center environment. So this is uh, a major change then in terms of career, as in this is a, this is a, a di completely different thing that you're doing. Yes. Awesome. Um, it's completely different to what I studied my, my degree in. It's completely different to what I was working in. And I just thought hell with it i'm over 30 now let's just take a risk and just go and do something completely different i love that yeah that is so cool so that and, and at that age that's um that that can be quite daunt well it is daunting to change your career but at that age that that that, that can be extra daunting too um, yeah it can be a bit scary yeah as such, but. yeah well hats off to you for doing that and you said that you were on courses. Is that right? After the after your um, the call center job. Yeah. So I chose to do a evening course because I was working during the day. So I chose to do an evening course um, at Brighton Metropolitan College, mm. um, which was an eight week course of an introduction to HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Yeah. And um, it was a it was a very nice basic start how to get into things. Um, a nice it wasn't too much at once and you could take your time with it there was lots of help from the tutor and stuff like that and it was kind of a nice environment to have like a small group of people rather than a massive classroom mm. but we're used to at school so mm. it was it was just a nice change of environment and something to do in the evening that got me out of my job and my brain think of something completely different okay so this was a this was an evening class yeah yeah and yeah. How, how long did that class uh, go for um, so that was about eight weeks right. um, in total for that course. Um, I moved on to a secondary course after that, which was another eight weeks. Mm. Um, but I mean, it wasn't expensive. So, you know, and the money that work was covering paid for it. So right. yeah, I just took advantage of it for why not? Excellent. Yeah, that's um, that sounds really good. And at the time, were you working at the call center whilst you were studying? Yes. So juggling both at the same time. Yeah. So yeah work in the day, then go do a course once a week. So that that's quite tiring, I guess, for both, you know, <laughs> physically and mentally, because you're having to deal with people at the call center and yeah. then you're having to deal with code in the evening. Yeah. So I think, yeah. Sorry, go on. Well, I was going to say you're like, um, you know, one of these superheroes that, uh, <laughs> you're, I wouldn't say you're, that. You're a co <laughs> coder by night, caller by day. <laughs> yeah. It's like, 
yes, my alter ego. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> um, it was, it's difficult and you can get like a word that goes around is burnout and mm. it can happen. Mm. Um, luckily this was like one week, one day a week for eight weeks. So I think it is, I would advise personally, yeah, to do it in smaller chunks, not take on a full-time course and work at the same time because you will just burn yourself out and yeah. you'll lose all enthusiasm for what you're studying. Sure. Definitely. Yeah, that's uh, some really solid advice there. Um, because because coding is, it, it is quite taxing on the brain to, to, to sort of like step into that world. Um, did you have any prior knowledge at all around coding before you did that course? Not really, no. So uh, I knew of kind of words like the sort of names like for HTML, CSS, mm. the kind of the words, but not what they used did so right. an intro course was exactly what i needed right awesome uh, yeah, yeah yeah okay okay so after after the the foundation course and then the the next course after that where did you go after that what was the what was the next step um so basically i wasn't really sure where i was going to go after the course ended um mm. and what i was going to do it might i thought i was thinking it was going to be something i just pursue at home and you know do on my own um but someone mentioned of a local group called code bar who basically um have people come in from different various agencies around the city mm-hmm. and and help coach people for free you get a bit of pizza you know get something to drink and yeah, you, I continued from there and just kind of moved on to Code Bar and went there, got some extra help with personal projects or if I wanted to brush up on some JavaScript I wasn't sure on, you know, mm. you could always get help there. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And um, we we had uh, Kimberly Cook on recently, who is uh, one of the directors at Code Bar. She was talking all about Code Bar and um, the fantastic stuff that they do. Uh, so mm. I'm really I'm really chuffed to hear that um, that's helped you out um, in your in your learning journey. Can I ask what kind of things you were learning at Code Bar at that time? Um, so when I initially went in, um, I started doing some my own coding, ba- building a built basic website for myself. Um, and so I was going in with a personal project, kind of getting a little bit of help tweaking bits here and there from what I've kind of cobbled together. Mm. Um, and then I thought, actually, I need to maybe cover some of the basics again, because it's always good to just go back rev- and revise on the basics. Sure, so I kind of started with their tutorials on their website and just sat with a tutor and went through bit by bit. Um, and then got to the, the fun that is JavaScript, which <laughs> kind of took me longer than the rest of it did. So, <laughs> awesome! Yeah, it was it's it's very helpful just yeah. to kind of revise and go through everything again because with me like learning, sometimes it can go in one ear straight out the other, and so I kind of need to reinforce that. Sure, sure. And uh, how long was that for at Cobar? I so that's once a week um, in Brighton at various different agencies. I went for about a year and a bit. Wow! So yeah, yeah, excellent. A year and a bit, just basically going through their tutorials initially, and then maybe going back and doing them again just to make sure I was clear on things, mm, mm. and then doing some more other personal projects as well, and getting some help with those and developing my own skills. And was that, I mean, whilst you were doing that, did you get a sense that your confidence of coding and the the knowledge that you were gaining was growing and growing and growing? Yeah, I think that my confidence was growing because their support from their tutors is really good. I mean, you know, their tutors, they obviously they they're they're putting their own time in to help people, and it's really positive, and it helps build your sort of your uh, self-esteem of what you're doing um, it makes you feel confident that actually it's okay to make mistakes as mm. well mm. they're kind of like well if you made a mistake that's fine this is why it went wrong and you learn from that mm. so mm. it's a very good support network there that can really help people out if they're willing if they're just starting out coding basically that sounds really really useful really helpful i'm so glad that you found that solid foundation um so you were taught by by um lecturers at the, at the at the the evening classes and then you went on to code bar and you reaffirmed and uh, and uh, built yourself up as a as a as a developer going through projects and stuff at mm. what point did you go right this is this is the jump off point i'm now going to apply for jobs 
Yeah, I think it was after that kind of first year, it was getting to the point where the business I was at was changing a lot. And there was, very, there was a lot of uncertainty with what was going to happen to employees and things. Right. So I was like, well, if something bad's going to happen to me as an employee here, I might as well take the leap now because later on down the road, I might lose my job there. So let's just take this risk. Yeah. Um, and it was just a case of just getting up sort of not over one day. It was over weeks of like deciding, but mm. you kind of just get up and go, I need to make this change now and yeah. do it now. Yeah. To secure my future. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, and um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know about you, but I, I like to reassess my decisions that I've made and mm. uh, think about whether or not I could have made those decisions at a different time in, in my life. So, you know, mm. the, the decision to move house or the decision to move to a different job. Did you ever, have you ever thought about that in terms of this jump off? Have you ever thought that you were ready before you, you, you did that? Or um, did you do it at the right time for you at that point? I feel like it, at that point, it was the right time for me. Excellent. I didn't want to rush it. I didn't want to kind of rush into applying for um, web developer roles and things like that without being 100% sure uh, in myself. And that could be different for various different people. They may sure. learn very quickly and obviously, you know, be ready faster. But yeah, yeah. I think you have to take it at a pace that's right for you. And when yeah. you feel ready for it, then do it. And can I just quiz you on that a little bit? What, what was mm. the things that made you feel that they that it was right for you at that point in time? Um, I felt more confident in the skills that I'd learned through the, the college course and, and co-buy as well. So I felt more confident with my CSS and my Java um, and my HTML. JavaScript mm. still is a little bit dicey. Um, but I think the more I did and and basically built with those things that I was comfortable with mm. um, the more confidence I had and I just thought yeah I'm ready for this I was doing yeah. sort of smaller little projects through CodePen with just small little uh, HTML CSS kind of projects and things like that and so the more I did smaller projects like that my mm. confidence built and I thought okay I'm ready to try on a agency basically and sure see what I can get Oh, yeah, I, I, I saw your blog uh, earlier. Uh, I like the, um, the, 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 the canvas stuff. That's pretty cool. Yes. Um, I'll put a link to all of this, by the way, in the show notes um, and on the screen here. Um, so y you, you've decided to make that jump. What happened? I mean, what, what, where did you look for jobs? Um, I... I went to a few agencies in Brighton, so the usual kind of go around saying, oh, I'm a junior um, developer or I'm new to um, web development, and do you have any vacancies available? So I did that usual thing, um, which was good and bad. Um, a lot of them, because of my previous experience of being in a call center for over 10 years a lot of them came back and because their agencies are like oh we've got work for you in a call center but not where <laughs> I was aiming for um, so that kind of I kind of knocked that one on the head and I just kind of started looking around at agency websites in the area and just seeing what was available and literally emailing them asking them questions not like putting in an application just saying like I'm a, a junior um, in the area um, wanting to get my first job. Mm. Do you know anyone or can you offer anything? And I think just being brave to ask questions to anyone because my idea, my thinking is that if you don't ask, you don't get. So Sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's some really, um, some more solid advice there. It's not just the, the, um, the job adverts that you should be chasing. It should be, you know, going in personally or sending an email mm -hmm. to them, having that sort of personal touch. Um, because often places are looking to, to, uh, employ, but they don't, they don't actually advertise, mm -hmm. um, or they haven't advertised yet, but they're thinking about employing. So if you can get in there sort of like during that headspace where they're thinking about, they need someone in for the next sort of, um, that they want someone in, in say three weeks time, but they won't put anything out there until it's that at that time, but they're still in that sort of headspace of wanting to set something up then if you can get them at that time then you've done their job for them yeah. um, which I think is, open that level of communication even if they're yeah. not advertising on their site just literally getting that communication started sure and it kind of make get your foot in the door a little bit so can I ask how many of those did you did you do um, before you started work <laughs> probably around about 
let's say five, six or seven different kind of emails to different agencies. Um, and a lot of them came back saying, you know, you're, I, I was honest with the email saying this is my level of what I know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's one thing that's key is that if you are emailing them, be brutally honest yeah. about what you know and what you don't know. Yeah. Because, and they may say no, but someone may say yes. And I think it was just a case of I had a few rejections saying your knowledge is still, you know, not great or stuff. You're still quite junior. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I got a few good responses back saying, oh, we would be interested for an interview. Had a few interviews, some didn't fit. Um, and then, and then the one I'm at now, um, at Till, um, they basically, I think they just wanted to sort of, they needed a junior and I think they were willing to take that risk and, you know, hire someone who's quite new and mold them into what they wanted. So it's kind of like a mental program here as well. (laughs) That's really good. I'm so, so happy for you that you found that, um, found the work at Till, um, yeah, that's 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 fantastic news. That's fantastic news. And can I ask what kind of projects you work on at Tilt? So, uh, I mean, it's been a steep learning curve, let's say, for me personally, yeah. because obviously I've gone from what I've known, and there's there's a whole new world of things that I that I've never even heard of before. So I'm I'm always learning. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, currently, at, you know, at the moment I work with like WordPress sites, Drupal. Um, and there are a few other projects that we've had that are more bespoke. So using something like uh, Bootstrap or Laravel, mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. I haven't done the heavy lifting with the back end. I've stayed more sort of a front end. So the heavy lifting has already been done for me mm-hmm. and I'm going in tweaking things, making sure they look right and everything. So they're utilizing my CSS skills quite well there, which I'm enjoying. Good. It can be difficult, but it's enjoyable. So they're, they're playing to your strengths and they're also training you up for the for the bigger things that's really good yeah Yeah. and you said that there's a a mentoring thing there as well yeah so basically um my manager who is my but the whole department manager basically um has set me out um goals for like my my year Mm. where she feels that i would be comfortable in um what i'd be comfortable in learning and where i would like to achieve to and that's kind of a two-way conversation so it's kind of like this is what my manager would like me to do this is what i would like to do and we've kind of merged the two yeah to make a nice fit which is good that's good that's good yeah it's, it's always good when um the managers do that they they kind of like they they can see your potential and they they map it to uh where they want the business to go mm-hmm. uh, and um yeah it takes a it takes a certain skill manager to, skilled manager to do that so mm-hmm. and it, sound, it certainly sounds like you've you've come from uh, a nice foundation of of uh being taught code and then mm-hmm. a nice foundation of working in a in the professional environment um yeah. it sounds like at tilt they they look after the people they employ which is so nice to hear from mm. uh, from my side of the table um okay so where do you think your career will will blossom from now on um well i mean there's been some changes recently so i'm getting more um rain over certain projects so i've been handed like a project to manage Mm -hmm. uh, making sure i communicate with the client and make sure that maintenance for them with their maintenance contracts is done on time things like that so there's more um what's the word kind of uh more responsibilities being put on to me which Mm -hmm. is good slowly which is good so i'm not over powered or yeah. feel overwhelmed at all um i think at the moment for me i'm comfortable carrying on kind of learning the way i'm learning at the moment and doing what i'm doing mm. i'm taking more of an interest as well in more back-end kind of development so i'm looking into more sort of php and my sequel and things like that so nice. yep. i'm doing more php which i find quite enjoyable it's it's quite um say theoretical in a way because it's just kind of like this is what it is this is and this is how it works and coming from my degree background it kind of help it works Mm. for me Mm. helps me understand it more Mm. Um, so I'm taking on more responsibilities and learning some things I'm quite happy where I'm at the moment I would like to progress more towards just being a fully fledged developer and just building some good sites okay so i just want to pick that apart too if that's okay (laughs) what is what do you define as a fully fledged developer for me i think it's um titles as such 
uh, people like they obviously people like to use titles a lot for jobs and things like that. And mm-hmm. I think that I see myself as a developer, um, not really a junior. I, I think, but I think it's more a junior or a senior level kind of developer. It kind of is more about your understanding and capabilities. So. For example, me as a junior, I'm going to still ask sort of questions every now and again about things because I might not be un- I might be unsure. Mm. Whereas you know a senior would be more comfortable in knowing what they know, and they might have to still might have to ask questions because we're all still learning, but sure. more confident in to go ahead and go and do something without maybe double checking. Right. Okay. Okay. So I, that's how I see it from my point of view. I think that it's more of a where you're at and what you've learned kind of thing um and when, i think and when uh, and w- what what do you think that that um you're you would like to do in order to get to that point um i think personally i think it's me building more confidence with what i know right um so just being more confident to you know just go and maybe if there is a bug maybe just just go ahead and fix it and push it through and make sure the client's happy with it and everything Mm -hmm. without having to basically have a double checked kind of thing that's personally for me sure um i mean senior could be many things it's like Mm. your knowledge it could be how long you've been in the company you know you don't different agencies are going to label it differently i think Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um i guess for anyone listening here who who is looking to get into a, a, a junior developer role or a senior developer role even do you have any do you have any advice on 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 that, is there anything that you can give in terms of like um, when you think that you're ready to, to take that jump into perhaps junior stroke senior roles? Um, I think that if you're applying for a role that is senior and they have like a speck of what they kind of want from someone, yeah. I think just be brutally honest about what you know and what you don't know. If there's something on the application for a senior level job that you might not know something about or or a language you don't know then say i don't know that but i'm willing to to learn right and i think if you have that kind of openness about saying you know i don't know that and i'm willing to learn it then that shows you're you know willing to try and if they don't want to pick you for that job then that's up to them but you know at the end of the day you're they're interviewing you you're interviewing them as well you've got to make sure that that's a right fit for you so here's, yeah, I totally agree with that. And but yeah. he, here's a totally left field question here. Um, <laughs> so we, we talked a little bit just then about juniors and seniors and the different types of developers. Um, in your opinion, is it is it okay to still be a junior developer for several years? Or do you think that a junior developer should evolve into a senior developer does that happen that automatically naturally or should there be a time when uh they you know they 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 reassess where they are and they have to go right i need to up my game to be a senior developer Um, what's your thoughts on that i think it's more um yeah with your kind of your own personal progression because everyone is going to progress differently we're sure. all as i've already said we already we, we all still are learning no matter what level we are we're all still learning something new mm. and so i think it depends on that conversation that you're having with your manager so if you're starting as a junior it, you know it depends on where you how you progress and where they see you progressing and the rate you progress um if it takes a year two year five years to become a a senior from a junior mm. if that's what it takes that's what it takes i don't think there should be any rush to just rush to a senior level job i mean mm. yes money is great um if you can get it but i mean i'm doing this because i enjoy what i'm doing yeah. not really for the money i mean i took a pay decrease coming from my old job that i left to here right. to become a junior web developer and so that was a risk but i'm now now doing something that i enjoy and i think it's more about your enjoyability than money at the end of the day and level i like that answer that's a very <laughs> nice answer yeah yeah um i think I, I i totally agree with you I, and it's it's very weird that there is just these two levels senior and junior um mm. because because once you're a senior i mean whatever you class that as mm. where is the next route of progression um personally i think that it's okay to 
still be a junior for a long time because it's 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 what you want to label yourself as and it's what you want other developers to label yeah. yourself out there's kind of like an expectation when you are a senior that there are things that you should be aware of and experiences that you should have had and mm. not not all positions allow for that um so, so for example um have you had any experience um talking to a client in web development like fake like over the phone or going yeah. to a meeting and, and all that stuff yeah, I mean, I've dealt with a few. Um, so, yeah, over email a lot of the time, I've had a few calls with um, clients. There was a bug the other day that we were going back and forth over on an email. And to be honest, it was just a lot easier just to get on the phone and talk it out because yeah. you can lose communication through email. And so I think it was easier just to pick up the phone, have a chat about what we wanted, what they wanted. Yeah. And it was a lot easier or just book in a meeting and do a face to face and just literally go and have a chat. Well, in some, in some places that I'm aware of, that would be a responsibility of the senior devs who, or the, or the, the, senior sort of like the project project owners if you will um and the junior developers would perhaps be doing maintenance or some um sort of bug checking or mm -hmm. whatever um and not actually having the interaction with the clients um so it's it's very different from so the point I'm trying to make is that it's very different in different organizations, mm -hmm. this whole label thing, junior yeah. and senior. Of course, you've got different levels of architects as well. Um, and, you know, the bigger the company, the more broader the spectrum is. Um, I guess in, uh, you know, in smaller companies, uh, lots of people, lots of developers wear lots of different hats. And mm. they become, in my opinion, very sort of um, experienced extremely quickly because they're having to deal with all of these different things like talking to clients and understanding the, the, the client's needs, their business needs, um, trying to replicate bugs um, and trying to reassure clients as well and also carry the brand of the digital agency that you're currently working mm -hmm. for with them. I mean, th mm -hmm. th these are all things that that um, you don't necessarily give someone on their first day. <laughs> True. That is very true. I think it, it is true what you say. I think it is very different to different agencies, what the, how they're going to run themselves and what juniors and seniors and all developers do. Um, I think it's, again, it's about communication. My manager was like, do you want, are you okay speaking to a client on this? And I'm being from a call center background, I'm happy to speak to anyone really. So <laughs> I was like, that's fine. They're just another person at the end of the phone. I can speak to them. It's fine. And if I have any questions, I can say, I'm really sorry, I don't know this, but mm. I will come back to you on it. Mm. I mean, there's no problem in you saying to a client, I'm sorry, I'll, I don't know this, I'll have to come back to you on that. Yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely, whereas some some other people with without your experience of a call center might fall apart at that point. Mm -hmm. and go, That's uh, very true. And, so it's all dependent on the person and having that conversation with your manager and say, actually, I don't feel that comfortable maybe speaking to a client as yet. And mm. they can go, okay, that's fine. As long as they're aware, then they can go from there. Yeah, because one thing that I, 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 I have said quite frequently is that um, writing websites isn't just about dealing with code. It's also about dealing the people, with the people who work on the projects or use the projects on a daily basis. It's, you're, you're writing code for humans. You have to mm -hmm. interact with those humans. And not, not all of us can do it very well. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think from your background, having been in a call center, uh, you have that talent, that, that ability mm. to do that, uh, which is actually quite a very unique and uh, desirable skill in web development because you are talking, you've had experience talking to clients uh, in, in many different situations, I'm sure, mm. some friendly and some unfriendly. Uh, and yeah. y you've been able to hold your own with that, I mean, working in a call center for that long, you've obviously, I would imagine you've had a, a whole varied array of, of experiences and mm. you've built your, your experience base up on that and you know how to handle situations um, that become sort of hot or what have you. Um, mm. So I would imagine that that was a, a very sort of like desirable skill to have um, when you, when you had that interview, but mm. um, yeah, congratulations so much for, 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 
for doing that. I love hearing all of these stories where you've done courses and perhaps code bars and, and, and other th- boot camps and stuff like that and then come mm. out of it um, with the thing that you you were sort of aiming for, dreaming for. Is this, um, are, are you in a place in your career that you are uh, super happy with? Is, is this the thing that you wanted to, to do like when you, when you decided to do coding? Yeah, I think... Uh, this is where I, I kind of want to be right now. I'm very comfortable with where I am right now and what I'm doing. Um, I, you know, I'm, I don't, even though my title is a junior web developer, I just do see myself as a web developer. And I think that's what we all are at the end of the day, no matter yeah. what the title is. Um, and I kind of, yeah, just kind of happy where I am right now, really, and just enjoying learning more things, doing more things, breaking things and trying to fix things um, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Excellent. So before we go, do you have any advice at all to um, junior developers or anyone looking to get into this, to, the, to this industry? Um, yeah. I mean, utilize um, any online resource that you can find, um, even if it's like a free course or something like that, or any local help that you can get. So if there is a local code bar to you, use it. Yeah. Um, because getting that support and meeting people that are in a similar situation as you is just great because you can just converse with those people. Yeah. You can, you know, you can help, help each other out basically. So you need to engage with that can, kind of community to, get what you want um also when applying for jobs or anything like that or in general just don't be afraid to ask questions and you know and be upfront about your own skills and your lack of skills as well if you don't know something be honest about it don't do what a lot of people do with cvs and basically pad it out with a load of stuff that's just complete lies just be really (laughs) honest because i think um, and potential employee employers will appreciate that honesty. Yeah. Um, and again, the one thing I mentioned before is that they're interviewing you. You need to interview them because at the end of the day, you're spending most of your time working for this company. And mm. if it doesn't seem right, don't go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely agree with all of that. That's some really good advice. <laughs> some really solid advice there. Okay. Thanks. So, um, before we head off, uh, how can people reach you? What's your, your Twitter handles and your URLs um, and stuff like that? So I'm only on um, Twitter. Um, I won't get into a Facebook debate right now. It's a bit long for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's at, um, at Joshy Hud um, for my Twitter. Um, my website is uh, Josh Hyphen Hudson at, at kind of speak right now it's too late in the day josh-hudson.co.uk for my website awesome i will provide links to all of these things in the show notes and on the screen but uh thanks ever so much josh for coming on the show it was a wonderful speaking to you and learning you. how you progressed in your career uh how you got to where you are and the the fact that you've come from a completely different absolutely different uh, career Um, it's fantastic to hear that. And, uh, like I said, lots of respect, hats off to you for doing that and congratulations for being where you are and for everyone watching on the YouTubes and listening on the podcasts, happy coding. And I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.